RFI, 6th of November 2023, new military bases in Australia and India in reaction to China's naval presence in the Indian Ocean. The democratic world needs to unite in opposition to China since it is waging an all-out war against the developed world. The Hai Wangxing, a Chinese Navy Type 815 electronic surveillance ship, was spotted in May 2022 sailing near the Australian-US Joint Naval Communication Post Harold E. Holt in Western Australia. The station, which is situated on the edge of the Indian Ocean, supports Allied submarines that are operating in the area with communications. The ship's presence demonstrated China's readiness to send its navy into regions of the Indian Ocean where it had not before traveled, in addition to listening in on communications with allies. This caused anxiety in Canberra, similar to what happened in New Delhi in 2014 when a Chinese SOG-class diesel electric attack submarine unintentionally berthed at a port in Sri Lanka. Chinese hydrographic and survey ships began to appear in the area in the following years, indicating the impending arrival of more Chinese submarines. Australia and India were reminded by such instances that they needed to be ready for China's increasing maritime presence in the Indian Ocean. Because of this awareness, both nations have already supported collecting transponder signals from automatic identification systems to keep a closer eye on the movements of Chinese warships. For now, the United States, Japan, Australia, and India have all utilized the data to draw attention to China's illicit fishing methods. Some speculate that the nations may eventually track Chinese Coast Guard and Navy ships using the data collection equipment. However, doing so has disadvantages. Chinese surface fighters could spoof or turn off their transponder signals. Furthermore, Chinese submarines are inherently stealthy and don't produce any signs when underwater. Australia and India have, therefore, looked for alternative means of keeping an eye out for Chinese warships in the Indian Ocean particularly in the areas where the Indonesian archipelago passes through, such as the Sunda Straits, Lombok Strait, and Malacca Strait. Due to this, the two nations have had to invest money in constructing new military installations and deploying new military equipment on several islands in the Indian Ocean. The China Challenge China has long had a fascination with the Indian Ocean. Chinese strategists have discussed the significance of the ocean in facilitating their nation's energy and raw material needs as well as its growing commercial interests. After China established its first military outpost abroad in Djibouti, on the western coast of the Indian Ocean, its interest became apparent. Given that China's next nearest naval base is thousands of kilometers distant, the base initially appeared isolated. Fortunately for China, Though, its enterprises constructed and, in many cases, currently run civilian ports across the region. For a long time, India has been concerned that China would exploit the ports to make it easier for its navy to conduct operations in the Indian Ocean. The most frequently listed ports are Kiao Kpu in Myanmar, Gwadar in Pakistan, Hambantota in Sri Lanka, and Chittagong in Bangladesh. China's massive Yulin naval facility at Yulong Bay on Hainan Island is a concern for Indian strategists that may be much greater. The station can accommodate a variety of warships, including aircraft carriers and nuclear-powered attack submarines, despite being situated inside China and initially constructed for the nation's nuclear-powered ballistic missile submarine fleet. The naval base's six nuclear-powered Shay-class attack submarines can sail into the Indian Ocean without coming to the surface or without an accompanying submarine tender, which frequently gives away the passage of submarines, unlike the Song-class diesel electric assault submarine that visited Sri Lanka. To reach the Indian Ocean, however, all Chinese warships, including its Shay-class submarines, must cross the Straits of Malacca, Lombok, or Sunda. Compared to the Malacca or Sunda Straits, the deeper Lombok Strait is simpler for submarines to navigate underwater. But to counter China's naval might, Australia and India need to be able to keep an eye on all three straits, both above and below the water surface. 
neither of them could accomplish this without more bases and forces in the Indian Ocean. India supports island precincts. Chinese warships in the Indian Ocean have long alarmed New Delhi, given India's persistent worries about a potential clash with China. It has pursued its Look East policy, forging closer relations with Vietnam, Indonesia, and the Philippines, nations that control the significant routes Chinese warships would take to reach the Indian Ocean, to decrease that worry on the diplomatic front. India has been working to develop new military installations or enlarge current ones in the Andaman and Nicobar Islands. Only for Soviet-built, prop-driven 2142M maritime patrol aircraft were available to India during the Song-class submarine incident, which allowed them to cover the whole eastern Indian Ocean. They were based at the Rajalai Naval Air Station on the east shore of India. Since then, India has bought 12 P-8I maritime patrol aircraft manufactured in the United States, a sale that the U.S. supported to strengthen its security cooperation with India. The P-8 is our more robust anti-submarine warfare platforms because they have longer endurance, higher speed, and improved surveillance and reconnaissance capabilities. Moreover, India built the Bas Naval Air Station on Great Nicobar Island, located 450 kilometers from the Malacca Strait at the southernmost point of the Nicobar Islands. India had always planned to extend the 3,500-foot runway at the station to make room for the P-8s. Although the runway was extended by 800 feet by 2022, more buildings have been halted due to environmental concerns. The Koasa Naval Air Station was created by India in 2019 on North Andaman Island, near the rumored Chinese espionage facility on Coco Island in Myanmar, at the northern end of the Andaman Islands. Once more, India intends to increase the station's runway to accommodate P-8s. As of this writing, the only naval air station with a runway long enough to handle the new aircraft is Utkrash in the Nicobar and Andaman Islands. A squadron of short-range Du-228 maritime patrol aircraft now resides at the location. India declared 2019 that it would be deploying additional planes, warships, and anti-ship missile batteries around the Andaman and Nicobar Islands as part of a 10-year infrastructure upgrade program. At this point, several components have been used. An Indian Air Force Su-30 MKI fighter base was created on Karnakabar, while the Indian Navy rebased a Cora-class guided missile corvette to Port Blair. Furthermore, the BrahMos anti-ship missiles have been tested by the Indian Army from the islands. In the meantime, New Delhi has constructed a new base on Agaliga Island in Mauritius, from where it will probably fly its P-8I maritime patrol plane. Strategic Port Expansion in Australia Australia has also started building military facilities in and around the Indian Ocean further east. The idea that China has become more dangerous has been the driving force behind that. Canberra is re-evaluating what it needs to defend its interests, including those in the Indian Ocean, which includes several islands and some of Australia's most extensive offshore energy reserves. In light of the growing number of Chinese naval vessels that have been spotted off Australia's coasts since the 2010s, China's trade and diplomatic spats with Australia in the early 2020s, and Beijing's growing political sway over Australia's neighbours in Oceania. So far, Canberra has focused its efforts on the Cocos, Keeling, islands because they have a more suitable harbour for handling heavy machinery than Australia's other territory in the Indian Ocean, Christmas Island. Strategically located 2,700 kilometres northwest of Perth and roughly 1,200 kilometres southeast of the Sunda and Lombok Straits are the Cocos Islands. Consequently, Australia occasionally flew P-3C maritime patrol planes from the islands during the 1990s, when it was worried that its lease on the island would expire in 2036, the United States even gave it a fleeting thought in 2012 as a potential replacement for Diego Garcia. 
Canberra declared 2016 that it would modernise the Cocos Islands airfield to accommodate the P-8As of the Australian Air Force in response to the growing number of Chinese warships along Australia's coasts. The airport's work, however, has slowed down because of escalating expenses. Nevertheless, given that the islands were highlighted in detail in its 2023 Defence Strategic Review, Australia is determined to see the building project through to completion. The four new MC-55A surveillance and electronic warfare aircraft from Australia will also use the airfield as a forward operating station. However, Canberra's most ambitious space building plan, approved earlier this year, plans for the Navy base near Perth, called Stirling, to be expanded. Up to eight new conventionally armed, nuclear-powered attack submarines, which Australia stated it would acquire as part of its AUKUS security alliance with the United Kingdom and the United States in 2021, are expected to be stationed at the facility. To support nuclear power plants, Work will initially be done on reusing some of the base's existing buildings before building new ones. American and British submarines are anticipated to visit Stirling more frequently in the interim. In August 2023, the U.S. Virginia-class nuclear-powered attack submarine North Carolina was the most recent. Future Australian submarines of a similar design, stationed at Stirling, might travel 2.2 days at an average speed of 30 knots to reach the Lombok Strait, where they could stay for months. In contrast, it would take 6.6 .6 days, at snorting depth, for Australia's present fleet of six Collins-class diesel electric attack submarines to travel that distance, and they would only have enough fuel for a week-long patrol. Self-detrimental disclosure. Concerns about China's naval presence in the area have motivated Australia and India to make significant expenditures in building military outposts in and around the Indian Ocean. These investments are still ongoing. Canberra and New Delhi are motivated to exchange intelligence about Chinese Navy boats in the Indian Ocean, which are close to Indonesia's three critical straits, because their concerns are identical. Australia and India may get an even clearer picture of Chinese maritime operations across the Indian Ocean if they combine that intelligence with information about Chinese warships that they already exchange as part of their participation in the Quadrilateral Security Dialogue, or Quad. Such cooperation would serve both parties' interests and be advantageous to both. To take it a step further, some in Washington could share such combined data with their fellow Quad member, the United States. That might be going too far, at least initially. Given its membership in the Five Eyes Intelligence Partnership, including the United States, Australia, Canada, New Zealand, and the United Kingdom, Canberra may be amenable to sharing intelligence with Washington. Still, India is unlikely to be as enthusiastic. After all, India's increased involvement in the Quad was never motivated by a desire to get close to the United States. India would, therefore, likely be more receptive to a request on the matter if it originated from Australia, a nation with which it shares a common interest. Washington ought to take Canberra's lead in this instance, 